Oh, hey there. I'll be right with you. Sorry about that. I just can't stop engraving and testing out things with this new laser. I mean, look at how cool that is. So this laser right here, if you're not familiar with it, is the X-Tool F1. This is a very different type of machine in some ways compared to X-Tool's other lasers, such as the DE1, the Open Gantry laser, the S1, their premier diode laser, and the P2, which is X-Tool's CO2 laser. This actually marries two different worlds of engraving in one small box. In this small little machine, sports a 10 watt blue diode laser and also a two watt IR laser. Now, if you're not familiar, IR lasers are a different type of laser that work at a different wavelength that allows you to mark and engrave metal. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in one small little box that is also portable. And out of the two months I've had it for testing, I still probably haven't even put a dent in the number of materials you can actually put into this machine to engrave and or cut. So let me give you a quick tour of the machine before I show you all the cool things I've been doing and making with it. So first we have our shield that's gonna protect our eyes from the lasers. So whenever the project is running, we really should have this down. Now, there are gonna be some instances where your workpiece is larger than the dedicated area inside. And under those conditions, you should be wearing laser safe glasses. They did not include a pair of glasses in this box. Um, I would highly advise going online and getting a pair if you're in the market for this and making sure you get the right glasses to make sure that your eyes are safe. And during my testing over the last two months, there were a couple times when I had to work the, or run the laser with the shield up and definitely those glasses are going to come in handy. On the inside of the laser, we have our build plate right here, or our, um, I guess our work surface is probably more accurately described. And there are a bunch of pre-drilled holes on here so we can use our little L bracket to get perfect alignment with the laser. And that's kind of a nice little touch and feature right there. Now the build plate, aside from being well machined, is also removable. If the dedicated area inside the machine is not large enough for what you need to engrave, you could raise this up on a stable base, which I'll show you one that I made for a couple projects, and laser down through this area here. Some people have even used this kind of like in a handheld mode and holding the laser at an angle to engrave on something that might be vertical. I haven't quite done that yet, but I do have some ideas of some stuff I might do um, in the future. Um, Definitely not anything I'm going to feature in this initial video. On the inside of the laser, we also have kind of an exhaust area back here. And there is a built-in fan. And so far, that fan by itself has been pretty good in evacuating the fumes and anything that's actually needed. So on the inside of the machine, there's one more thing that I'll show before we take a look at the ports and the other items here. So up on top, you'll see where the lens is for the laser. Um, it also comes with a lens cap. It's advised you keep the lens cap over the laser lens when you're not in use. On the side of the laser, we have a couple ports. We have our direct USB connection for the PC. We have an accessory port up here. We have our focus knob. This machine does not have automatic focusing, but in a lot of ways, it, it didn't really need it. Their focus setup uh, was is actually really easy and works really well. So focus up, focus down, and you get your two dots to align, and then you're ready to go. On the machine, we also have a button for framing, and there's a really quick little blue line that'll dance around the area that you're about to engrave. And that kind of makes it suitable so you don't really need a camera. And I didn't miss it either. And the addition of a camera on this, aside from what I just said it's not needed, would have raised the cost in a way that wouldn't make sense for this machine. And everything has worked fine using that frame button so far. On the back of the machine, we have some standard ports. We have our on-off button. You have our power port. You have a additional accessory port. Um, you have an additional accessory port. And this is for, this last USB-C port is meant for their air filtration system, which I actually have, and I'll be showing this later in the video, and a hardware key. This hardware key is required when the machine is in use. If you take that out, it locks the machine and you can't use it. So make sure that you don't lose this. And I 
remember correctly, there's an extra one also in the box. Just in case, make sure you keep it in a safe place. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use your laser. And the last physical item on the box itself is our emergency stop button. Push to stop and twist to go back to our normal state. So that is a quick tour of the machine itself. It is put together really well. It's well weighted. It's not going to move around. The shield slides up and down really easily. And everything else is really well thought out on the machine. I've loved using it. So now let's get to the good stuff. What have I been making with and engraving with this machine? Let's take a look at some of the projects. So let's take a closer look at some of the projects and engravings that I've done. So let me start with this one here. This is a black painted aluminum business card. These are really popular and really common to engrave. Let's see if we can set it up a little bit better here. And a lot of machines will do this engraving. But one of the differences, this machine is able to engrave at a higher detail than a lot of others and at a pretty good speed as well. So typical diode machines can do this type of engraving, but there's a little bit more of a limit. But if you run this with the IR laser, you get some really incredible detail on there. And that is of the uh, shop dog, of course. On the back side, I did a second one, a little bit different, full photo of our boy Wolverine there. It was actually really hard finding a decent image of this from the movie, so I had to do a little bit of cleanup. But still came out really cool on the F1. Next up, which I don't think I've ever done before with any of the other lasers, is engraving slate. If you're not familiar with this material, slate is a type of stone that's typically used for pool tables, but it's also processed into these little squares as coasters or, you know, little portraits if you want. And I have a cool version of Swamp Thing there engraved on the tile. Now, this is one of the first tests I ran with the F1, and I think I understand the settings a little bit better now. And I could probably get an even better engraving and even a depth type engraving there. So I might try that again um, in the future. But just as a just as a simple example, I think it came out really cool. These are a couple ceramic tiles that I engraved using the Norton White Tile method. I have a video on that method if you're curious about it. And these came out really well. It's about 15 minutes a tile as of right now. I could probably optimize it to be a little bit faster, but the quality came out really good. The dot patterning is a little bit better than I even see on my other machines that I've done before. I typically sell quite a few of these and I have a set of these that will probably be on my geekbuilders.net store very shortly. Next up here is engraving on plastic. Now I'm going to put an asterisk next to this one just a little bit because this is done with the IR laser so it does have the capability of engraving on plastic which you really can't do with a diode or even CO2 laser. Now the asterisk is because you have to really pay attention to what plastic you're engraving. There are some that are more toxic than others and I don't really know what kind of plastic this is so I kind of took a little bit of a, a chance and engraved it and it came out pretty cool. Kind of interesting that it almost has a like this yellowish green type of look when it's engraved and if you run your finger over it you can actually kind of feel it being raised up just a little bit. And I'll also show you another example of something plastic that I engraved I think is a little bit more common to engrave but just so everybody out there knows you rock. Now one of the key benefits of this machine is the IR laser that allows you to engrave metal. So I did a test engraving metal and I started with this. This might seem a little bit silly. It's just a tape measure, but I've bought several of these to have throughout the house and they always get moved around. So I want to make sure that I had a label on it for where it belongs. So it always belongs on the fridge in the garage and I was able to engrave garage on it. And that is a permanent type engraving now. With the IR laser on the F1, you can engrave different colors. I have not done a full spectrum test yet to see the colors that I could get, but even this one looks almost a little bit yellowish based on the settings that I used. But that's permanently marked now. I can put it in the garage, and everybody in the family knows exactly where this one is supposed to be when you're done using it. And now on to what I'm really excited about. I've wanted to do an engraving on one of these since I saw that it was possible to do it. And that is an engraving on a brass coin. So here is the engraving on the brass coin. Now the 2 IR 
unfortunately, is not powerful enough to really do a deep relief engraving on the coin, but it's enough to mark it with enough detail to read in this way. And given the limitations of the machine, I could not be happier with this result. This is really cool. From the angle, you can kind of see the how it's engraved in a little bit. But in the light, the form is kind of revealed there. And this is also a double-sided engraving. So the ability to do something like this on metal. So these are brass coins. You can do challenge coins and do them as gifts. Although I'm not really sure it's cost-effective to batch them out. It does take a little while. But I really love the ability to do this. These are going to make great gifts. Maybe incentives for some of my students. Um, and yeah, I just... I'm really loving the ability to do this. I can't stop looking at it in the light. I just think it's really cool. And I think this is kind of the topper on the cake with the machine for things that I like doing. Although there's still a lot of materials I still want to test. A lot more things I want to do. And I think I'm just hitting the tip of the iceberg with this machine. So let's go ahead and start wrapping it up. I'll give you my final thoughts on the machine and talk about who I think this is actually for. Over the last few years, Xtool has made an amazing number of machines and a lot of cool innovations in the laser space. And I think the F1 needs to be included in that category. The inclusion of two different lasers, the 10 watt diode laser and the 2 watt IR as a pairing makes for a really cool and powerful machine. And I don't mean power just in terms of the amount of wattage, which is a little bit low compared to a lot of other diode lasers but powerful in terms of functionality and what you could do in such a small space and in a portable package. It is not a perfect laser by any means and I aim to give you kind of an honest response and anybody that's already using F1 already knows this, but you're getting a lot for your money and that flexibility is gonna be very important for a lot of people too. So who is this machine for? Well, the marketing answer is, well, everyone. And that is technically true. The first group of people that I would say this is for is somebody that doesn't already have a laser and has a very small area they can dedicate to a laser engraver slash cutter. I have the F1 and the Xtool filtration system for the F1 on a surface smaller than 12 inches by 24 inches. That's a pretty small footprint. So somebody doesn't have a large area to dedicate to this type of hobby. This is kind of the perfect setup. Not only is it small and fits in a small space, but even with the paired filtration system, you're still not taking up that much room and you could technically even run this indoors. I've been using the filtration system for the last two months and I don't know why I didn't buy one sooner, to be honest. I think I need to look into getting a couple from my other machines as well. Even though I'm even in the garage, I'm not even inside the house doing this, but I feel a little bit better having an extra layer of protection in terms of the air filtration, especially if you're gonna be engraving different plastics and metals, you don't want those different particulates in the air. Um, actually, you don't want any particulates in the air, even from wood being vaporized. But I do feel better having that filtration system and why not add more protection if you're able to. The other group this laser is most likely for is if you do craft shows, if you have to be on location and move around a lot, this is a small enough setup that's pretty easy to travel with. I haven't done a vendor event in a long time, but when I do one again, I will be taking this machine and doing custom engravings there on the fly. I'll be honest, this is not the fastest machine out there, but it's fast enough to do some custom jobs on location. And even then, it looks just kind of cool having it in the background working and you get people asking questions. And then you direct them to the more expensive stuff on your table. But one more group I think this laser is for. I've already stated if you don't already have a laser, if you have a small working area, if you're traveling, if you do craft shows, but if you don't have a way of marking metal, if you don't have a way of engraving metal, this is a lower cost affordable solution for being able to do so. It is not a full powered fiber laser. It is not a MOPA laser. You're not gonna be able to do really deep engravings on metal. Um, and, but those machines are three to four times the cost at least of the F1. With this, you could mark metal, you could do custom jewelry, and you can at least test out if it's something that you have a market for and then move on to bigger and more powerful lasers if you need. But this is a perfect starting point for all of that. And if you're one of the people that are short on space but also want the ability to do other things with the laser, 
There are a couple expansions for the F1. There is the add-on of the rotary, so you can use a rotary to engrave tumblers or cylindrical objects with the machine, but they also have a conveyor system with a sliding table that will automatically slide and engrave the next item on that conveyor. I will have follow-up videos for the rotary and for the conveyor in the near future, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. So if you made it all the way through the video to this point, I wanna say thank you. Your eyeballs and your attention mean a lot. I really love what I do here on YouTube. I really love reviewing these machines. The feedback from everybody has been great. And I hope that everybody is getting what they need out of these videos. I do wanna remind everybody that Xtool did send me out this machine for review. So this is my contractual agreement to do the video in exchange for the machine. And but I also want to try to be as honest and transparent as possible in terms of the function of the machine, how it works, both the pros and the cons. Xtool does not tell me what I can or cannot see in the videos. I guarantee you that everything that I'm saying about the machine is my own opinion without the influence of, of Xtool. If you're interested in picking up one of these machines for yourself, I have a link down in the description that is an affiliate link. So if you do purchase from that link, the channel does get a little bit of something in return but I hope you're getting what you're looking for with the channel and also with this laser. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash geekbuilders. We have a growing group of people over there and there are continually more offerings every month in terms of designs, information. It's also a way to communicate one-on-one. -on -one. Patreon just implemented a community function that allows for a Discord type uh, format for discussion in groups within Patreon. And that's at patreon.com slash geekbuilders. If you want to see more content regarding the F1 before you make your decision, I do have another video coming out that's focused on tumblers. And I will have another video coming out that also shows the conveyor system for the F1. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy your time in the shop. Don't forget to design, make, and play. I'll see you in the next one.